sit with me Come and play as I need Hi, I'm Dharma. Uh, I play guitars and backing vocals. Hi, I'm uh, Brian, and I'm the main vocalist in the band. Uh, hi, I'm Jude. Uh, well, I play the bass. Uh, hi, I'm Syed. I play the drums. Hi, hi we're West Grand Boulevard. Boulevard. Uh, we play alternative rock, a little bit of pop. Um, but you know, we try, we try not to restrict ourselves to a single genre. We just play whatever the hell we feel like. So we started in 2005, and there uh, five of us, uh, with Eric as well. And I mean, Eric's no longer with us because you know he's quite busy with. Uh, he's got a he's got a baby daughter, beautiful, you know, really fun. At the time, Jude, Brian, and Eric were in one of my favorite local bands called Dead End, uh, together with another friend, Mark. So we kind of got together and just decided to jam and see what came out. When I was speaking with the guys and asking if they were interested in, you know, being part of the project, I remember telling them that, you know, what, what, our, what our goals were going to be. There was sort of a strategy, you know, first year try and get ourselves known. So put the music out online, really push it online so that at our early shows we would already have a crowd that was familiar with the music. And then for Baby Eats, you know, the strategy was to try and find out who was doing band selection and then go to them and, you know, give them samples of the music but for them to be interested in that the samples would have to be good so we rehearsed a lot and then we recorded with Leonard Suse at Snakeweed so that we'd have good demos. We like to have fun but the fun comes from putting on a good show that sounds good and it's played well you know that's free of mistakes so uh, I think that was our approach we just practiced really really hard uh, and then when we got to the show we just kind of let loose and have fun. We got booked for our first two shows, the Singapore Street Festivals, and it was, it was two weekends. So the first show, we didn't really tell anybody about, but uh, Eric's sister, Chen, uh, came down with a video camera and she filmed the whole thing. We used to do that quite a lot back then. We would record the show, and then as a group, we'd all go to Eric's place, you know, and you know, f spot all the mistakes. And then for the second show, which we had told a lot of people about, you know, we were much better prepared um, so that at least we know that whatever is in our control works. Uh, we played Bay Beats for the first time in 06. You know, especially back then, Bay Beats was super exclusive. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was the festival for local bands to play in, and everyone aspired to Bay Beats. Yeah. So to be invited was, you know, such a huge thrill. When they invite you, they're like, hey, you know, okay, so are you interested in playing Baby Eats? And if you're like, oh yeah, totally, which everyone was, um, they'd be like, okay, great, you're not allowed to tell anybody about this. You know, you, you have to keep this a secret until we make the public announcement. Yeah. Up to that point, people were like, hey, are you going to Baby Eats this year? And we're like, well, yeah, you know, I think we are, <laughs> you know? And they're like, oh, do you know who's playing? We're like, oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> who knows, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's part of the plan, but you, of course there's no guarantee that it'll pay <laughs> off, right? You just, you just do your best. You're like, well, if we want to play Bay Beats, these are kind of the things we need to do, so let's try and do those things. The winner for the best breakout band goes to West Grand Boulevard! In 2008, we toured Philippines uh, to play at the Sonic Boom Festival. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, 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 the scene in the Philippines is really interesting. I mean, you know, every band had its own techs. They had all the instrument techs. They carry all your gear, they set it up for you. The, the reason why they do it is so that before the show, the bands can interact with fans. And after the show, the bands can interact with fans. And that's how they grow their fan base. You know, they really spend a lot of time with the fans, getting to know them. And, and so there's a lot of loyalty there to the musicians yeah. and to the bands and to the music. We launched our album, Life, Love, and a Lost for Better Words in 2011. I 
don't think I would go so far as to say that we write good music. We write, I think we write music that, that we're happy with, and if other people think that's good, then great. You know, we're, <laughs> we're selfish, you know. Uh, you know, but I mean, you, at the end of the day, you can't please everybody, yeah. so you write to please yourself and hope yeah. that other people like it as well. I do feel that bands need to start thinking about how they can create a movement behind them. So like a community that follows them and we need to start developing our own niche and we need to create a brand. It's up to the next generation of bands to yes. keep working on what we have already hopefully built. Like it's like setting a platform for them to step up and then bring it to the next level. Yeah. I think it's a great privilege to be able to play your music for other people. <laughs> don't, don't do it for fame or money or whatever. I mean, really, <laughs> that's just, yeah. that's, it, you know, if, <laughs> it's if, a lie. No, if you, if you, if you get it, that's great. But, you know, just remember it's a privilege. And if you don't get it, then, I mean, that shouldn't have been the, the goal to begin yeah. with, you know, like, you should just do it because you love it, because it's fun, because you love music.